Well, all right, all right, all right, and welcome back to another exciting episode of the Planet Gen X podcast. I'm your host, Sean. That over there is Brian, and we're so glad that you joined us today for a really great episode. We got some, a lot of stuff, a lot of something to talk about. Before we get into that stuff, though, we want to remind you to please hit that subscribe button. Please give us a like, a dislike, whatever you like. We don't care. Something. Yeah. Just leave us a comment if you like as well. We like comments. We yeah. get the we get the odd comment here and there. We do. Um, uh, not that often, but you know, yeah. I try to interact whenever I see one. <laughs> yeah, the world of YouTube loves interaction, so that's why we say about the dislikes and everything else. They do count, people. Just so you know. Yep. Um, while we're on the subject of YouTube too, I think hopefully now I have figured out why they are making our videos look like dog shit Jones. I mean. Dude, I was pissed about last week's video, man. I was watching it on the big 65-inch, which, of course, isn't doing it any favors, but right. damn did it look bad. And I was like, I was ranting and raving. I'm like, man, I give these fuckers way more bits than they need for these videos. There is no excuse for this shit. So I finally Googled it or whatever. and, and So it was downsampling it? Is that what's going on? They're just compressing it. Well, ultimately, what, what it is, is they have, so, so I, I uh, Googled it, found out through a YouTube video, or many YouTube videos, there are a lot out there, but um, they use two different codecs. Right. One for the, for the big time people, you mm. know, the, the, yeah, and one, and, and a, a shittier one. Everybody for, else. Yeah, the starter <laughs> channels. Um, but you can, you can fool it uh, by how you render out your video. So we do 1080p videos. So now what I'm going to do, starting with this video here, is render it at 1440p, which is, is higher than what mm. we're actually recording at. But it's just going to fool YouTube. That's all it's going to do. Right. So hopefully, when I do that, it'll automatically use the newer codec, the pretty codec, the one that that all the big boys get. So yeah, fingers crossed, fingers like crossed. you say there. Uh, yeah, I hope this, I can't wait to see how, how much it, it, it changes because while we don't have the best cameras in the world, we get way better video than what they've been showing up there. And it, sometimes you'll see, we might get lucky, I think sometimes and get a, that better Kodak once at a blue moon. Cause I've seen our videos look better. Right. So I don't know, but I can apparently force it, force the hand every time, you know? I wonder if it has to do with like file size too, like how long the video. Well, is. they do. They do have uh, a what they call a a bit. Um, shit, I can't think of the, the wording. A bit cost basically, but I think there's a better word for it. But yeah, um, yeah you can go look up what what the different bit costs are and why they do that. Uh, because yeah, I imagine there are a ton. Obviously, way more lower end channels. So obviously you don't want big, big videos sitting there on the servers taking up space. That, All right. You know, may just sit there doing nothing forever. But as long as you know the tricks, I guess it's all good. But you know, I didn't get the memo for a year, so. And so we're, we're shooting in 14K and. Well, we're shooting in 1080P, in. and we're gonna we're gonna send it out at 1440P. Well, yeah. Yeah, which essentially won't look any different to anybody, but it just fools it. It's just a better codec. Yeah, it just fools it into using a different codec altogether, and, and that codec is way better at how it uh, compresses the videos that it sends out. Because what it does is it goes through there. You know how you can go on the uh, the menu and and you got a, ra a range of different resolutions to view it in. Well, yeah. it's it's doing all that. It's breaking right. it all down in all the different resolutions and stuff. So if you get the good codec to do that for you, you're going to get prettier pictures. If you get the the shit codec, you know you get what you get. And it's bad. I don't like it at all. But um, you know, while we're on the subject of YouTube, and you had brought this up, what, I don't think it was last week. It might have been a week before. Um, recently. Yeah, you, you did very recently. Uh, YouTubers quitting, man. Like, long-time YouTubers, as a matter of fact. But I just noticed, like, you had brought it up, and then here in the last two weeks, because it was about two weeks ago you brought it up, that the proliferation of videos about YouTubers leaving is just mind-bottling i mean it's yeah. going crazy the way people are saying you know what's the deal well i can tell you what the deal is 
COVID's gone. Thank you, Google. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, that, but uh, COVID's gone and there was a proliferation of channels. You had people that had millions of subscribers at, you know, three years ago. Well, those subscribers didn't go away. They just stopped looking. I mean, like the numbers didn't go away. They just, the, the viewers stopped viewing and interaction stopped happening. So you actually got your real numbers, basically, of people that, that really want diehard fans that want to see you. Or they're now feeling that. They're now right. seeing what that really is. And a lot of them, you know, what they they were lost their jobs at COVID or whatever, or or decided they didn't want to go back to work, and then started all this stuff and lived off of it, and now they're like, uh, what do I do? You know, that's just part of it, right? And then there's the part you were talking about with the uh, just the maddening schedule of it. Also, saturation, man. I mean, like, right? Because you know, sometimes you can you can find something good, right? Some something useful, something that you want to watch, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I mean, perfect example for me is uh, Critical Role. Um, you know, I, I used to love Critical Role and now it's kind of a process to actually watch it for me. Yeah. Uh, just because there's been so much of it and mm -hmm. it's the same, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that's a lot of what it is too. It's just, you know, Kind of the market's normalizing because everybody's chasing the algorithm. Everybody's doing the same thing that they've been doing. Their brand identification, if you will. Yeah, they're not evolving um, like they should be, or they right, just don't exactly. want to. Like they don't want to embrace the shorts. I don't either, but I'm not in this, you know, to just give up so easily. So I'm trying to throw a short out, at least one short out a week. So far, I've done the last three weeks. I guess what I thought after seeing all these videos of YouTubers leaving was like, yay, see you later. Bye. <laughs> right. We don't More need, uh, I mean, like, it's ridiculous how many video, you know, just how many channels are out there. Um, some are, some are in it just for a minute. And I just want to see everything that's not serious go fall by the wayside. I only really want the serious stuff here. Uh, well, the hope is, I, I think you probably are from what you're saying, you're sharing the hope is that we get away from the kind of op-ed presentation type thing of just like someone, uh, you know, talking, you know, just talking heads basically. Right. Yeah. Cause I remember when YouTube was like, I could go watch a guy make a sword or, you right. know, yeah. somebody hike a trail or exactly. do this or yeah. that. It was, it was stuff. Yeah. Right? Doing stuff. Yeah. You were watching somebody or doing something like that. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Um, but yeah, guys, sorry y'all didn't make it through it. Some of y'all have been doing it for a long time and I guess you got, got what you wanted out of it or didn't. Problem with some of these I see for the most of them is they were doing a hobby and that hobby mm -hmm. turned into work and yes, yeah. that's, that's never a good thing for you. Uh, but there's ways to do it. You, you, you know, if you got the, uh, let's say your Linus, for example, who, who's who got a bigger, you know, uh, group to work with, obviously a bigger budget to work with. Um, if it's a matter of him wanting to do, which he did recently, you know, he got that CEO and whatnot. Mm -hmm. He can actually like, here, y'all do that shit. I'm going to, I'm just going to do what I was doing and maybe the content will come from that. That's how I would approach it. If I was, I had his pockets anyway, you know? Well, I think, I think Matt Pat is probably the example that most would want to follow. Um, as far as I can tell, um, he, he said goodbye you know, he's still doing uh, some videos, but he's got like right. a deadline where he's he's going to uh, get off. And if you don't know Matt Pat, for some reason, and you're on tube, YouTube, I don't know. Uh, he does the, the theory stuff, game theory. Uh, he did like food theory, fashion theory, movie theory. It's like a whole thing. But um, it, it seems to me like he's going to be stepping away from this, from the presentation. Yeah, He's probably going to still be involved on the back end right, right. uh oh, yeah. and especially maybe involved with money. some of yeah some <laughs> of the writing uh some of the studio work which is really what i think most of us who are who get involved in this really want more of that right we yeah. we want more of the studio experience and less of the my face and camera exactly yeah no doubt um but yeah, I just noticed that I, it, as soon as you mentioned it, then it was just like, oh, man, everybody and their brother were talking about it. 
Yeah. So it was worth mentioning. Also worth mentioning is something we brought up last week, too. Uh, we've talked about the Rabbit Companion recently. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it doesn't have apps. Like, if you if this thing becomes big and is the next iPod or whatever, then that means people giving up their apps. Well, in a unrelated story, you know, we I have recently brought up that I felt like we'd be talking about the Apple Vision Pro fairly soon and and of course that that holds true because some news came out mac stories had a it's a computer publication for Macs. um had a an article about the vision pro and the lack of third develop third party developer support mm -hmm. which is huge because you have names like netflix um youtube spotify amazon lyft meta you know, like Facebook, WhatsApp, and, and Instagram, all those are not going to have native applications. They're not going to have... And, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, they don't, they're not going to have, uh, like, iPad versions, you know, like they have for their iPads, uh, some kind of knock-up version that'll go into it. They're not going to have a compatibility mode version. If you want to view, like, your YouTube stuff, you'll have to do it within the Safari browser. Right. And some of that is not that big of a deal, but, um, you know, for some of it, uh, you know, getting rid of your apps may be problematic. Uh, there was one you mentioned a second ago, maybe I'll get back to it, but uh, big things would be like your car insurance, right? Like most people don't really carry around a card for, or I think most people are, are like me and don't carry around a card of, uh, about their insurance anymore. Yeah. They just go on their phone, go to their app, pull up their data. Right. Use that for everything. Um, obviously, it would be uh, the same for things like Netflix, right? If you're going out of town, just bring your phone with you, access your Netflix account on your downtime. Um, Lyft would be a big thing, getting out and about and yeah. needing a ride. Well, with some of these, you you lose a lot of functionality, like uh, you can't download videos on Netflix through the browser. Like, right. You know, that's something you have to do through the app, which isn't going to be a thing. Um, but what it, what it speaks to, because I know early when I heard about the Apple Vision Pro, I, many people were talking like, this is the next iPod. And I'm like, what? Really? Have you looked at the AR VR space in the last few years? Yeah. Especially like, so Google kicked it off like basically in like 2013 with the Google glasses and stuff like that. And it's been very, very mild. Um, yeah. And I love the idea. Mediocre. Yeah. yeah mid <laughs> mediocre. It's, uh, it's a space I love, uh, and thinks very cool, but just the right, it just hasn't hit, it hadn't, uh, captured lightning in a bottle well yeah and i mean there have been a number of issues with it right like obviously power was an issue that when they were coming up with the idea of wearable power was the issue yeah um but with the google glasses it was weight right was kind of the the major thing yeah you know they went through all this trouble of development and, and then put it into people's hands and they were like damn this is heavy <laughs> Yeah, well, and, it was a different time. Shit was yeah, uh, but now it's it's come a long way. Uh, the The interesting thing is, no, no matter how far it gets, I don't think that the relationships are there, right? Because you you have to have the um, a reason for it, right? You, like, well, yeah, they, that's the thing, like. Um, they don't necessarily see the, these companies kind of do get it. They're, they have been paying attention. Whereas the people who were talking about owning, you know, the vision pro and, and how great it would be, aren't, aren't like paying attention, but it seems like the developers are, you know, cause they're like, well, why would we want to make an app and invest all that time and money into it when 60 people are going to use it? Maybe, yeah, you know? And uh, then the no compatibility mode is, well, we don't want to, you know, have to deal with all the support on compatibility mode when it doesn't right. work and all that shit. So um, the, the other end of it is, is Apple's relationship with developers. It seems to have such an a, uh, um, adversarial, adversarial. Yeah, yeah, attitude towards third party developers, man. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. 
it's really ridiculous. So it made me start to question, okay, well, we were talking about that rabbit AI and how people would have to give up their apps. Well, what if Apple has to do that out of necessity? Like, so the Google Pro, I mean, sorry, the Google, uh, Google, we're talking about Apple. The Apple Vision, uh, Pro. Vision Pro, thank you. Okay. Um, would just like have to do stuff like the rabbit companion, you know, like you say yeah. with your insurance, it just has to know how to bring up your insurance. Like that, that code has to be in there or the AI has to be able to develop it on the fly right then and there to get what it needs to, to show you that. So in, in other words, what I'm saying is like, you know, uh, it is the app. Yeah. It has to, it has to change to do whatever it needs to do to satisfy you. And maybe if Apple did something like that and had the Vision Pro or just even in a fucking phone, really, because it'd be pretty <laughs> damn amazing, um, that could probably change things. But they, they'd really have to ch uh, like do something major, t I think, to make it the next iPod or iPhone, whatever people were saying about it. I'd probably agree, but I mean, this has been a long time coming for Apple. I mean, they, they it's their business model, right? It, 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 that's the problem with their relationships. It's always like, we'll pull you off a little bit of something, but, you know, we're going to take a lot. Yeah, when they want to hold on to everything. Yeah. When they don't want to let anybody. What's that? I said, when you agree, when you agree to partner with them. Yeah, they're going to be taking a lot. Oh, yeah. Um, but they want to control so much. Like, you look at their hardware and how they just don't let anybody get into their hardware. Everything's kept close to the vest. Um, it's like they want to do all the software development in-house, yet mm -hmm. they don't have the... Uh, Apple software is just not that great, in my opinion. It's just really not. Um, Depends on what you're talking about. End user point, yes, I would agree. Uh, but for example, uh, you know, the software for my phone that I'm recording on right now, it's pretty awesome. Yeah. Well, let's say it. Okay, so that's awesome. But let's say you want an alternative. Let's say something they didn't. Something other software wasn't as good. You have no choice. Yeah. And that's the problem. Um, so they've been so adversarial to the third-party developers, there's few and far between. I think that's why their gaming space has been almost nil their entire life. You know, I think they had probably more games on the Apple II back in the day. <laughs> Maybe. I'm, I would believe that's probably true. But um, I don't know, man. I kind of see this app, the Vision Pro thing kind of failing. I really do. It's Well, there's also the equipment. Well, yeah, there, there's also the question of, you know, how much room there is for competition in that sector, right? Yeah. Because um, obviously there's going to be a settling of a price point for whoever leads the pack, and there will be fights if there are more than a few, right? Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it'll be a dust up for a while, but, you know, once it settles down, it, it I, I have a feeling it's going to settle way down well, the, um, as it cool off. To me, the only people that, that really have done anything in this space at all, ultimately, is Meta. I hate to say that, but Meta has been the most successful at it. More people I know have like got the new Meta Quest for three for Christmas. Right. I know quite a few people who did. I know quite <laughs> a few people who owned the, uh, the old, the one before it, you know, and, uh, Oculus? Yeah, the Oculus 2 or whatever. Is that it? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I've never met anybody who owned any other thing. I know there's other stuff out there, like I think, what, Leapfrog or something like that? Or um, There's something been other like stuff, that. like the hollow glasses, the, the hollow uh, lens, lens has been out. And uh, I just don't know anybody using that kind of thing. So what Apple would have to do too is get one over on Meta because that's, to me, it's like the one thing people know. Well, if you want VR, what are you going to get? The only two things that ever pop in people's minds are probably PlayStation VR and the Meta stuff. Well, I mean, that that's kind of what, what sticks into my head is application. It's like, are you going to be watching porn on VR? Are you <laughs> going to be playing games on VR? Yeah. Uh, it's not what was really promised 
uh, with the whole idea of what it was, what this was supposed to be, and you know, the the idea harkens back to. I know you're not a big on on reading sci-fi stuff, but a guy named William Gibson. Uh, really? It was this idea. <laughs> yeah. Books. <laughs> 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 like paper, like paper, and shit. like the stuff you wipe your ass with. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, but um, the idea was like this augmented reality space where you know you would go go out in the world, carry upon your regular life, and there would be uh, what assets that don't take up real space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and there's not. There's not a great great market for it, and unfortunately, the way the market works now, the only place I would see that would be pe- people trying to trick people into using certain apps for certain things so they can get ad revenue from mm-hmm. app- advertisers. Yeah. Because that's the business model, right? Well, we've seen it in movies, too, where like people are walking around and they're getting fed like AR you know, um, ads and shit like that. Uh, I think it's something that's very, you know, likely to happen at some point. Yeah. Um, I think that, I don't know, you gotta, you gotta get people interested in it. Like make it something that's just fun for them. Uh, I, I get, I'm again, I'm going to go back to the, the hollow deck theater idea, you know, a place you can go that has two or three hollow, you know, or four hollow decks where you can have any kind of a number of different experiences you know whether it be like a laser tag or you just go in to go to another world see what it's like on mars see what it's like on the moon uh you know just to have a different experience that can get people to be like whoa can i get this kind of thing at home and then you go okay yeah here you go here's the apple vision pro now you can have almost this exact experience at home not a hundred percent but you can almost have this exact experience when you start to get that and you can get people interested I just think a lot of people don't people know. Interested, but that you know, to me, that's like a hook, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You get them, but then it's like, okay, I, I've been to Mars. Now what? Right? Like, well, yeah. But that, this see, in really my work? mind, it's limitless. You can't. You can do anything because uh, because the way I'm envisioning it is is only limited to what you can program. Yeah, uh, and that's the thing. You have to have the libraries for that. There has to be work for that. You have to be paid for the work it you know it's just i'm coming from a a a business sense yeah yeah, recall it's 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 going to be expensive but you think about the things like there are assholes that spend ridiculous amounts of money just take a ride in space for 15 fucking minutes yeah so if you can if you can sell that i think that you know even as as a high expense like people go to disneyland disney world all the time all the theme parks like that. If you if you have it within that kind of pricing, or even even somewhat cheaper, you know people will do it. If you give them a long enough experience, it's all about how long you give them in that experience too. Like ten minutes for a hundred bucks, that's shitty. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying, hundred bucks should get you like an hour or something like that. Well, I don't know. I, I'm also thinking business wise. It, it 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 does come to a thing of uh something that we're seeing more of now that covid's over with that whole that whole uh transfer of wealth that occurred during that you're going you're going to see less and less stuff marketed towards everybody right it's going to be marketed towards those who can afford it yeah um and so your idea of like 100 bucks for 10 minutes i think that's more the way it's going to go oh it's probably yeah it's quite possible um, especially, and God forbid this ever happen, we don't want any central bank digital currencies, but if they ever actually get us under one, then they'll be able to monitor every every penny we own. And mm-hmm. just like what you said, they'll know exactly whether we're the haves or have-nots. Yeah. And they'll be, you know, and of course with our social score and everything else, it'll it'll uh, it'll be a nightmare. Sure well, I mean, it already is, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all, it get worse. all these oligarchs and in russia and the u.s you you know a lot of them are really making money off of our data oh yeah yeah you know the uh the uh dow went up to like uh the highest it's ever been like 38 8 or something like that a couple days ago yeah and uh you know you have to think like a company like blackrock just bailed out bailed us out 
in two seconds, dude. It took like no time to fix. If they want it, they can make it. Like <laughs> it's it's crazy, dude. They just here here's a here's three trillion dollars. Okay, yep. now our numbers are back up. Amazing, right now. I guarantee you, somebody from from this presidency is going to come out and say, "Look what I did." <laughs> Guaranteed. Well, I mean, does it really matter that that's how politics work? You know, it's everybody yeah. taking credit for stuff that, you know, really doesn't involve them. Yeah, no doubt. Dude, um, I wanted to tell you this last week and I forgot, so I'm glad I wrote it down this time. I saw the TED TV show. Wife I, and I have watched all of them. There's only like seven episodes, which is a total disappointment because, dude, this show is fucking hilarious. Is that... Is that Paramount? It is uh, the cock. Peacock. Okay. Yeah. It anyway, is, it is awesome. It is awesome. It kicks off the first episode so fucking wrong and racial. It's great. It is like so refreshing to see in this fucking world right now. Um, it goes hard in the paint, brother. I mean, like really good. Um there's like a scene where they're sitting at the dinner table and they're saying all kinds of shit back and forth. And it's just, dude, it's like priceless. And that first episode really kicks it off. Like the third episode is a little, man, you know, cause you comparing the two and it's like, God damn, that first episode was so good. And, but the whole yeah. thing overall, yeah, really enjoyed it. The kid who's playing, um, John does a great job. Like just with the Boston accents and everything are really funny. And, uh, I think he does a really good job of playing a young John. No cool. doubt. And he's got a he's got a sister, an older sister, and she's really cool. She's not a bad looking broad, but she's really cool. Like she's cool with him and, and Ted and they get into some hijinks and shit. But I got to say, man, I, I hope that that we get more seasons of this very soon and we don't get the the um, Orville treatment where it's right. every two years or three years or whatever for another season. This is gold and we need more of it. OK. Well, we need show, more shows doing this kind of thing, man. No holds barred. I mean, we've had that, right? <laughs> we have, but when you can't have it, it starts to feel great again, man. Yeah. Because everybody's I, uh, like, oh, don't say that. Don't say <laughs> this. Clutching their pearls and shit. I can't remember which one it was, but I recently read something. I want to say it was Stone. Uh, the the Jersey Boys. Mm. Um I, I want to say it was, it was Stone Trey. Um, it was saying, you know, it, looking back, it's been twenty three years, right? Mm -hmm. The South Park has been yeah. around. Yeah. Uh, and he said, if there was anything he could get rid of it, out of that, it would be the first four years. And it's because he looked at it and he was like, we were twenty five, and we were doing basically elementary school jokes. Yeah. Yeah, it was crazy, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and it's gotten so much better. And, and again, those guys, too. Yay. Hooray for those guys, man. They're like literally the last ones uh, keeping it alive. That's why I was so happy to see, you know, Seth MacFarlane getting back into it. Because we've gotten that kind of thing from him before. But it, it's nice to see that he isn't getting pressured or doesn't feel like he's getting pressured anyway to, to just be one of those, you know, Disney cookie cutter type deals. Well, I mean that—that's another thing. Uh, I, we're we're kind of past the shock value of it now, so you know it, it has to be funny. You can't just you know go go after whatever. Yeah, and that's the, yeah to that's be it to be shocking funny. anymore. You yeah. you have to be funny at right. the same time. And that's what was great about it. It was yeah. funny, dude. It had us rolling. That was, that was the best part of it. Um. I see it a lot with like uh, I don't want to trigger any of the writers here, but but like right wing comedy, like the startups, you know, the things that aren't really that popular. Yeah, they they do all this cringy shit, and it's you know, it's because they they have this idea of like offensive is funny, and yeah, maybe it is to you, but. Are you making the show for you, or are you making the show for the people watching it, right? right? Well, that's a problem many people have, man. They they can't separate that. Like, this isn't just a show for me. It's good. Yeah, that's a hard thing to do. You got to be careful with stuff like that. 
Um, yeah. While we're talking about shows, I'll give it an honorable mention because I really never watched this show that much occasionally. Um, and the man coming back to it, I for such a super intelligent man. I am against some of the things he's been saying recently, but uh, he seems like he's probably one of the last Democrats that, like old school, probably like, uh, um, fuck, what's his name? <laughs> the guy that does uh, real Bill Maher, like ah. one of those last real Democrats. Those were I, I consider Democrats that I could actually have a conversation with and and have a level, you know, actually have a brain in their head. Um, these are the Democrats of old. We wish we're back in power instead of the neo Democrats. But anyway, John Stewart's coming back to the Daily Show, and I know that's going to make many, many people very happy. Uh, again, very intelligent man. Just uh, I hope he uses it for the right thing and not to spread any propaganda and whatnot. I, I I think he's above that, and and hopefully we'll get some good comedy and decent news out of it too. Have you watched any of the problem? The what? The problem? No, I haven't. I, I don't okay. like, dude. Honestly, I don't care for him. His, po I don't care for what he stands for. Uh, That's what I was gonna say. You're probably not gonna enjoy it. Uh, again, it will still be a writer's room, and his talking points are valid or not. They, you know, they are pretty left leaning. Yeah, they, that's the problem I have with him. To be such an intelligent guy, how can you lean that left? Even Bill Maher is like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> Even he's like, I, can, I can't fucking claim to be with these people anymore. They're insane, you know? And those, I, 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 like I said, I could talk to those guys. I, I can give them a pass because I know in their heart of hearts they want the right thing. They might just have a bit of a, a mixed idea about how to get there, maybe, you know? Mm -hmm. But I feel like they're really generally want the same America I do. They just want to live and be left the fuck alone, but just have a different thought process on how that happens. Maybe. But what scares me is the Neo Dems. Those are the ones that scare me. They don't seem to care about what America, they don't seem to care about what's best for you and I. Uh, they just want to see what's, what seems to be best for whatever special interest is going on at the time. Uh, you know, they're... well, look, man, I, I always say this left or right. It doesn't matter if, if you're involved in that part of it, they're generally not caring about what you're talking about. Yeah. They care about their wallet, right? Yeah, it really is, man. Um, there is there is no real separation between the parties anymore. That's why I separate and say neocons, neo dems, uh, because that's the group you're dealing with. And there's still some of the old old guard in there. You know, I don't know what they're doing, man. And some of them need to go. You know, some have been in there way too long and are and are entrenched and and they've been paid very well and it's bullshit and they need to get the fuck out. Uh, <laughs> McConnell, get the fuck out of there. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Yeah, we need. Well, we need I remember, reform, dude. I don't know if anybody else remembers, but I remember what was it two years ago, roughly, maybe even longer. McC McConnell was one of those that was was like pushing back against trump and now he's mm -hmm. he's sucking on his cock so well i, I don't know what's dude that, that, that dude clearly has no idea what the fuck's going on like he just starts yeah, zoning well, out and shit dude i mean like it, that's the sad part about it man these guys are on some shit so i'm fucking nuclear <laughs> baby soul good drugs. Shit, man i mean they are on some shit these motherfuckers and they're living to be way older than they would have you know, uh, yeah, and that's one thing I'd like to see. I would like to see people younger than sixty in these positions, yeah. please. Yeah, but at the same time, I want somebody who's got a maturity level too, because then you got the AOCs of the world who, who's in there, and she's like a fucking preteen girl in there, and and has the attitude just like it too. Well, I mean. They all are though. Like you know, Jim Jordan is just just as much a prima donna as anybody, yeah, right? Yeah, I mean that's what um, I'm saying. Like, it, and it, he's it, old as dirt. <laughs> it's it's weird. I, it's hard to describe. But anyway, yeah, they're about to, there's about some shit going down in Texas, man. We may wake up tomorrow to a real fucked up situation. Yeah, uh, that's, that's I can't wait to see how that goes down because if Biden actually has the balls to federalize the National Guard, then we're in deep shit.
because that's bad news. Well, I mean, he, so far as the way federal government and state government and all that works, he does have the right to do that. He, he can do that. It's unprecedented. It is. Un- that's what I was going to say. Yeah. It's unprecedented. And it, it, it's being manipulated by other political parties, yeah, right? Yeah. Uh, Abbott's kind of kicked it up to Trump, and Trump has, like, pushed it out. To, like, if you're in my state, you know, being the states that, you know, are popular for him, yeah. where, where I guess where he got the popular vote or whatever, right. then— Red states, mainly, yeah. Yeah. Then, uh, yeah, we, we need to be against this, and we need to send people down there and this and that. Listen, I don't dude, know. It's every it's state needs to be against us. This is wrong on so many levels. You know, uh, Biden shouldn't be letting these people just walk willy-nilly through this place. And if he's not going to uh, secure our border, then it's up to the governor. It's, it's his state, and if, if the federal government won't do it, he did exactly what he should have done, and he's handling it himself. And Biden just needs to stay the fuck away because it's going to get ugly, dude. Uh, if 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 he if he makes that move, this is literally exactly what the catalyst could be for a civil war. And one thing I'll say further on that: you're talking about the states. It's nice to see at least half. There are 25 states with Texas on this, so that's a plus too. And they're not just know, all southern got, states either. Yeah, I've got mixed feelings on it because. Uh, I can I, I can see, okay, yeah, it's secure your border. Uh, but I always harken back to the Trump wall, which was like, here's what we're going to throw at the problem. Guess what? People are going to throw all this money at this problem, and, and like, here's the solution, our razor wire and all this other stuff. People are going to find a way around it. And then, you know, it, it's, I don't know. It's irresponsible spending, in my opinion, that that is kind of the pinnacle there well the problem is you you can you can what which is what we've done for years is is try and keep them back and of course some get in but there's a difference between just trying to keep them back and then just totally letting them in yeah. and not giving a fuck what happens that's bad we've had way too many bad people cross that border terrorists you know on watch lists that some have been captured some haven't there are who knows who's in, who's in these groups of people? Well, here's another thing. Uh, that's only one border that we have. So if we button up that border, we're going to have to deal with Canada sooner or later. And, and eventually it will be a problem to where, you know, not only are we keeping people out, we're keeping people in. If it yeah, does I mean, come to like it. this fascist state or whatever— it's going to be like the Eastern Bloc all over yeah, again. Yeah, I right? see that point. I get what you're saying, but at the same time, I don't want a great gaping hole in my fucking uh, the shitty border. the no the The Canadian border is like a different border altogether, man. It's like what you have coming from up there and what you have coming from down in the southern border is two totally different things. And yeah, that could change, but the so kind the people... of people that get up there. It's, so, for example, like everybody's in in South America. They can't just go up to Canada and then come back down. So it's easy for them to go up because there's all that land for them to walk up to. So if it's if it's locked down and their only recourse is to go to Canada, it's going to make it significantly diff- diff- more difficult for them to get into the country. They can still so try. What, what I see happening is a different class of coyote that won't be walking people through, right? They'll put them on a ship. The ship will go to the, to the other border. Do you think it's pointless to not protect your your borders? I, I think it's pointless to, you know, do it stupidly, right? It, it has to be an involved process. You can't just say, we're going to build a wall and then like, you know. Well, I'm not saying that's the answer. Do, do whatever. But certainly. You, you have to have, you, you have to have like monitoring. Right, well, I'm all you, for you putting have, the whole fucking national guard down there. Yeah, uh, and I'm fine with that too. But like whatever you have to call them, you you have to have like participation in the defense of whatever. Right, mm-hmm. it can't just be like, well, we're going to throw this at it and you know fund these people or those people and 
you know, put some money in the pockets of these politicians, you have to say, okay, this is our border guard or whatever, right? Yeah. And this is how it works. And it's not just like one process. It's multi-pronged. It's comprehensive. Well, you just got and, and that manpower and or the, the, the even drones to help them, whatever it takes to help them cover a certain amount of area. But yeah. that's it. They can be the Border Patrol. That's fine. I think the Border Patrol up until the last few years, you know, was doing a fine job with what they had. But if you give them more, more manpower, more, say, drones or whatever, more autonomous vehicles that can help, you know, re replace manpower, uh, then that's the way to do it. You can be smart about it, like you said. You don't have to be idiotic about it. Um, walls might be good in some spots. Maybe not a complete wall around the whole fucking you know, country, but the walls in some area might be useful. Razor wire in some areas might be useful just to keep people from going into certain areas that you can't patrol easily, you know, and then you come back and monitor them here and there when you can get over there to see if they bypassed it in some way. Yeah, some people, two or three might get through or whatever, but dude, the, like, I don't know how many millions it is now they've gone through in the last uh, three years, but it, it's just astonishing <laughs> number of people that have been allowed to go through there. And I'm not against immigration. Dude, my grandparent, great grandparents wouldn't, I wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for immigration and coming through Ellis right. Island and all that shit. I dig it. There's processes. There were processes back then and it was way looser back then. There's, there's been all kinds of laws and shit change all that. So they can, they can loosen that up. I'm fine with that too. If you need to, you know, get rid of some of these laws you've put in over the years that just makes it too difficult for people. Let's ease some of that up. Fine. Just let them go through the proper process and do the right thing. Don't make it ridiculously hard for them, and don't make it too expensive for them. And it became to where it was like, oh, you have to have $25,000 to become you know, a U.S. citizen. That's fucking stupid. Well, here's the other side of that. You know, it, it, There's all this talking about how, how all of these bad people coming through. And I'm not going to argue that there aren't bad people that come through. But you look at the situation in Mexico primarily— like, there are good people that want to get the hell out, and where the hell are they going to try and go except for here? Um, and so, I don't know. I kind of feel like that's usually a dog whistle. Um, well, they can, like I said, if they had an easier way to get through, they could come through legally. The problem is this open thing you're letting these cartels come through, dude, the, the cartels are bad. It's really bad, man. I mean, Mexico I is not controlled by any, of course, it seems we're not controlled by any real government either, but I mean, like you look at Mexico, they are actually controlled by their cartels. And, and I agree with that. And that's, that's what I'm saying. There are also norm, normal people down there that don't want to be living in that. Yeah. Right. Oh, I get it. Um, man. I mean, I get it, but yeah, I mean, it is what it is. You got to Coming here is not necessarily interesting. Go somewhere else, dude. There's other fucking countries down there that aren't bad. Like there's countries oh, they want to in go South to Panama? America. <laughs> he could go to Brazil and shit. There, you know, there's not fucking. It's not all bad. Argentina. Yeah, dude. Argentina apparently is going to be the place to go if that dude. You know, get he, he's. We need somebody like that guy, man. And hopefully he doesn't turn out to be some crazy motherfucker. But he's going he through. He is, this. man. He's a cosplayer in a a, a freak we'll show. We'll see. It, time will tell, dude. Time will tell. Maybe maybe he'll actually help his people. We'll see. It's easy to say that, man. We don't know anything about the guy. Yeah. There there is information in, out about that guy, and he does have a background of being one of these kind of kooky people. Okay. Yeah. Well, if he saves his country and does good for it, then I guess it works. I'm not exact, I'm not against the eccentricity if it if it works. I mean, look at Wonka, which I watched, by the way. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that guy kind of does remind me of Wonka a little bit, but you know, <laughs> Wonka was eccentric as hell, but he was generally a kind-hearted guy who was just wanted to make chocolate and shit. I had mixed feelings on Wonka. It was it was interesting to see it, you know, more of a, a magical. So you did imagining see it. than a te technological one, right? Yeah, you did see it then. Yeah. Um, I actually, it was at first, man, when it kicked off with that first song, I'm like, it's because it's a song you don't know, you know, so you can't reference from like, because they did have some of the music from the old one in there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, shit. Because I know my wife doesn't like watching musicals and stuff. So she was kind enough to watch it with me. But once we got past that first part and they actually got in just regular dialogue and stuff, I was like, okay. 
because I really love magical stuff. Any kind of movie that that's like just magical, there's like magic going on or, or something like that. I've always been down with stuff like that. Yeah. And I uh, gen- generally thought it was a good story because you're not you're not rehashing what we've already seen. It was a whole new reimagining of of, of Wonka's. And I imagine I haven't actually read the book. I've had the Great gr- Glass Elevator read to me when I was a kid, so I kind of know that story. Hmm. But um, and that's what I've been waiting for. I'm like, why the fuck don't they make that movie? That would have been the the natural movie to make, but nobody's made that yet. I'm still waiting for that. But anyway, so yeah, it was a nice reimagining it of uh, of the story. And, I agree. Uh, I also saw Night Swim too, which is something I w- really wanted to see. I don't think I've seen. Well, re- refresh my memory. That's on the that one, one with the uh, wa- the the swimming pool that has the. Uh, it's kind of like haunted, basically because it's a spring swimming pool. The yep, water's coming from that. the earth. I haven't watched it, but I remember. Yeah, um, it wasn't too bad. I mean, like I, I haven't seen a lot of great horror movies recently in the last few years, and it wasn't terrible. It wasn't super great. Uh, it did bring up the memory. I've been telling my wife for years about this old movie that I saw back in the day. Back, it was a made-for-television movie in the uh, early 80s. And all I could remember was, like, blood, the shower turning into blood, the water turning into blood, and uh, a car being crushed by a gate to where it exploded. Like, they were trying to get in the house, in the driveway, and the gate crushed the car, and it blew up and shit. And then, like, <laughs> okay. at the very end of the movie, there was, like, in the basement was, like, a hole, a big pit of evil or some shit like that um it turns out so this movie kind of reminded me kind of triggered that and i was like i ended up hearing a uh a movie critic say the exact same thing and gave me the name of the movie so i finally know i want to find this movie it's called this house possessed gotcha that's that's all do you remember it no, I don't, but it's always great to have something like that, and then it just pops yes, out, Yes, right? dude, dude, you have no idea. 1981, I think, is when it came out. Since 1981, I've wanted to know the name of this movie, so I could, because I've been telling people about it, for, you know, I just ran up, like, something will trigger the thought, like this movie that just came out, you know, be like, yeah. I'll tell people about this movie, and I'm like, but I have no idea what the fucking name of this movie is. I've never seen it since, you know, especially it was made for television movies. They're one and done, you know, you'll never see them again. Right. Um, so I'm hoping maybe I can find this movie, but yeah, this house possessed. If you know where this movie is, and you know, let me know. Put it in the comments. I would love to know how I can get a hold of it because uh, it, I, I, I'm sure it's shitty. But right. I don't care. I just want to relive it, my childhood, one more time. May, may have a Disney moment with it, right? Yeah. No. No doubt. Yeah. A Disney moment, or or what do we call it? A, uh, a Desoto. Desoto moment. That's right. That's right. So, uh, wow, man, this is probably a really long episode. I'd venture. Feels to like it, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> like that, that whole thing we just talked we... about. Yeah, the politics thing that was way. We had no idea we were going there. So, right. Um, but I, I felt that was important for posterity's sake, man. I really feel like uh, the next twenty four hours are going to be very um, poignant in in history for this country because I, I feel like I, I put a tweet up the other day that it's going to be the breaking point. Like this is everything's been coming up. You feel like it's going to come to a head. I think I think that this thing in Texas is the head. It is the catalyst for everything about to spiral out of control. And I hope that's not true because the other end of that is you know World War Three looming. So right. which which do you choose, World War Three or Civil War at home? Honestly, I don't think we we have much of a choice. I, I really think you know the the way. The way the the GOP has, I'm not saying that the left is correct, right? I I'm saying that the whole approach with the GOP as of recent that has become the the party of Trump, they are practicing pretty violent rhetoric. Um, and I don't know. It seems like there's been this escalation to where, like, if you're not on the left, then you know, maybe it's okay to kill a transgender person or, you know, crazy stuff like that. I don't know about that, man. I don't know where you're getting that shit from. I hadn't heard nothing like that. Uh, it, it's really all from... All I know is people want to make sure, want to keep their country from from getting fucked. We have a constitution. We have people we, that are put into government, and they have, they have oaths they take. They have laws they have to adhere to, and we have 
people just doing whatever the fuck they think they can do to uh, to ham up their political opponents, to do whatever they do to let our border wide open just because on a whim they think it's okay to do that. That this is the kind of shit people are tired of. And there's only one way if they if they're not going to change on their own. There's only one way to get your government to change, and that's through a revolt, through revolution. So that's what these people are talking about. I don't know about, you know, let's kill the transsexuals or whatever. No, people want to make sure that their government doesn't get took, that the, their just regular way of life, just living and being a normal human, or a normal American, I should say, <laughs> uh, doesn't doesn't get taken away from them, man. Your basic basic American rights that we have that are guaranteed to us by documents that were signed, you know, more than 200 years ago. As long as you're white. And no, it's as long as you're everybody, man. No, the, the original documents were as long as well, you're yeah, a, at that white point, and yeah. a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, I get it. Like, there, there's been some amendments, and there's and that's fine. You can make amendments, too. If 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 everybody agrees, that's what they're, and that's why we have those amendments. And and that, and then, like you say, that that white thing is out. Um, yeah. But that that's what people are upset about, man. They they want, and, and 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 I'm glad to see it. I'm glad to see people are ready to stand up. I don't want to see anybody take up arms against anybody else. I want the people in government to stop over overreaching. There, there, it's it's not like it's just one one thing. Oops, you know, here and there, it has been piling up, piling up, piling up, piling up, especially in the last three years. But you can go back longer than that. And it, yeah, I would say since Reagan, it's not been about us. It's been about who's lining the pockets, right? Yeah. Well, you have this globalist agenda, man, and it's uh, it's not where people want to be. Maybe one day, but. You got to go where the people want you to go, and you can't just force stuff on. And that's what they're trying to do, and, and they're trying to change this country inside out. And they've got key people in key places to do that. Um, the gov, the, honestly, the left have been running rough shot. They're the ones in power, and they've been running rough shot over just laws, just laws in general, just doing whatever the fuck they want to. But then, I'd, then turning around and saying, "Yeah, but you're going to be in trouble because you broke this law." That's bullshit, Brian. And that's a banana republic, especially what they're doing with the. Uh, the Trump thing and, and him and him up like they have. He's your political opponent. You want to have well, look all the left done that before he was fucking your political opponent. All of the left are centrist anyway, right? They they've had to come more towards the center in order to get into office. So they don't really represent. They lie. The left. That that's yeah. kind of the point you were making earlier of like old school Dems, right? Yeah, there's a clear difference, dude. There's real Democrats, which don't exist, and then there's the new stuff. Neocons, yeah. too. Now, it's not just Democrats. There, there's new Republicans. So, I mean, I don't know. I I think it's lost. I think it's been lost, uh, but um, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we're going to have to fight. It's only lost when we, when we haven't. It's not lost yet. But yeah, it could very well be, and it just depends on. I don't know, man. It's it's a wild situation. I, can, I don't is. have the answers, so let's just let's just end it there because we've gone on for a very long time. <laughs> we have. And I'm not gonna have time to edit this stuff tomorrow. It's gonna be a nightmare. I'm probably gonna have to put the podcast out late tomorrow. So. One thing we forgot to mention: Happy birthday! Ah, thank you very much. Yeah, that was Tuesday. Big, Big forty-seven. Birthday. Yep, I'm yeah. an old bastard, but I love it. Having a weekend good thing. Shape. What's that? Having a weekend thing. Yeah, yeah. Having a little uh, birthday dinner with the parents and the wife tomorrow. So that uh, I'm going to try and do most of my editing. I do Saturday morning. I get up early. I'll do like pre-editing after we finish sometime tonight, and then I'll do most of it early in the morning. But I don't know how much I'm going to get done tomorrow before I have to leave. So I may have to come back and edit some more and then put it out. So maybe later. Maybe a little late. And then I have. Thought we'd have, like, not a too long episode. I knew I had a lot to talk about, but it ended up going way longer than I thought. So this will be interesting to see how long it is. Yep. Anyway, guys, we thank you so much for watching. This was a jam-packed episode. We hope that you find some love in some story we had in here to keep, uh, to keep being excited to see us every week. But until then, until we get back to you in another week, be excellent to each other. And as always... We'll see ya.
on the flip side. Peace out, y'all. Thank you so much. Yeah.